Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast of Wake Up Church. We've been asleep for too long. This is your host, Rosalind Best. Today's podcast is being brought to you by BestLegacyFoundation.org. Please visit the website for opportunities for scholarships, mentorships, and a chance to leave a lasting legacy. Today's podcast is entitled, Satan Wants to Normalize Sin 2. Let's get it, church. Oh, yeah. Anything that we watch on television, frequently enough, we begin to dehumanize and disassociate from real feelings when we see it, such as murders and robberies. If you're from a small town where crime happens maybe a couple of times a year, it's a really big deal. But when you're in a big city where crimes happen every minute, typically multiple crimes are committed within a short period of time every day, you become desensitized to the fact where people being killed, children being kidnapped, becomes normalized. And Satan is on an agenda to have us normalize sinful behavior that God has said, don't do these things. Why does he want us to feel that way? Because if he can allow us to perceive sin as something trendy, everybody's doing it. Um, Everybody's doing this or everybody's involved in this. If he can warp our mentality to think that things that violate God and God's laws are normal, then we get snagged in a, in a loophole. Doing anything illegal, which is without having a license to do it, has grave consequences if you get caught without a license. For example, if you're out fishing or you're out hunting and you don't have a license or you don't have uh, the fishing license that allows you to, uh, let's say, fish for red snapper or for trout or for um, sheephead, whatever the game or whatever the fish, uh, the school of fish that you are pursuing, if you don't have the license and the officer the game and warden officer finds you committing an act, you're going to be punished more than it would have cost to have acquired a license because they want you to follow the laws. Our government is set up that if we violate certain laws, we get penalized huge consequences, whether it be your taxes, whether it be speed limit, it depends on the extent beyond the speed that you're traveling it will determine the extent of your penalty because our government and our lives are governed by laws. Well, what about the spiritual laws that God has set up and said the Ten Commandments are the laws that should be applicable to mankind? He is our God. He created us and he set the government of heaven. He is the government of heaven. We live in a king kingdom with a king. We don't live in a democracy, but we are governed by a democracy on this earth in our country. But when we deal with the spiritual kingdom from which we come from, we are foreigners in this land. We are strangers in this land called the world. And so when we begin to adapt and adjust and modify the rules and regulation that heaven has already said we are to follow as an ambassador of the kingdom, this is where we're, we're going to fall into snares. Like I said, the Ten Commandments are the biblical laws that are still active on the books. Now, there are strange laws on different state books that nobody understands why they're there. For example, in Florida, you can't drive uh, barefooted. Now, I don't think people on spring break are going to get tickets for it, but just understand it is a, it is a law on the books. So, you need to know what the laws of the land are so that you don't violate the law. And you need to understand the laws of God so that you don't violate God. And he does not have to penalize you for not having a permit or license to do what you're doing. Now, God designed sex not for a man and a woman. You say, what are you talking about, Rosalind? He didn't. He designed sex for a appropriate couple 
called a husband and a wife. And if he made it legal to have sex, if you have the marriage license. Now, you can have sex without a license, but what would be potential penalties that you might have to be subjected to for not being married? Let's go there. Your first penalty could possibly be an unwanted pregnancy. Many times people don't use protection because they think, well, uh, you know, it'll be okay because we've normalized abortion as an option for adults or teenagers not taking the responsibility to use protection. We are to abstain, but if you're not going to abstain, which violates God, at least protect yourself because the penalty of having an unwanted pregnancy can ruin your scholarship possibilities, your chance of living an independent life before you know what it's like to be responsible for another life, giving you time to develop the skill set to prepare to be a good parent and having a two-parent household with a dad and a mom. Another penalty for having sex without a license. Again, I said abortion, but the worst is abandonment and neglect of the children that were conceived without a license. When you're married, you are encouraged by God to procreate and to have that family nucleus so that boys can learn how to be like boys, girls can be like learn to be like girls, and that they can see mom and dad living under the umbrella that God has approved and sanctioned and will bless the marriage. But when you are just out there, many times the baby daddy will only love the child to the level that he loves you. So if you say it was a one night stand, he didn't love me. Then you wonder why it's easy for him to neglect and abandon your children. If your husband and you have a child and you get divorced, that dad is going to feel such an attachment to that child because that child was conceived in that marriage and from their love. And so he, it, it holds a different weight when the man has an investment in the wife and not just the girlfriend or um, the chick he met at the club. He will neglect those children unless he's been raised right. The financial strain, okay, you you have a one-night stand and you say, well, you know, we don't have a license to get uh, have sex, but we're going to do it. And next thing you know, you are on a show or you've been served with child support. Now, your job where you're bringing home 800 a week has been slashed because 250 or 200 now every week goes to child support. But you made that choice to run the risk of being sexually promiscuous without a license. Now, it's so important that we not forget that our government is very, very harsh on penalizing folks that break the law. And so if the government is that harsh, how can we plan to escape the penalties of breaking God's laws? He's a king with a kingdom. We can't normalize whoredom. We can't normalize fornication. We can't normalize adultery. We cannot. As the church, it's our responsibility to protect what God has said needs to be protected. The sanction of marriage. The sanctity of marriage. It is a covenant that God approves. He puts his thumb of approval, his seal of approval. I approve this marriage. But if we're doing things outside of the marriage without a license to permit us the benefits of being married, you can't get the same residuals. Now, there was a woman in the Bible, very sexually active. She had multiple husbands. And... She didn't really change until she met Jesus. 
When she met Jesus, her lifestyle changed. God wants us to stop whoring and be holy. He does. He wants young men to stop whoring and live holy. Young women to stop whoring around and be holy. Now, you can't get whole if you being a hoe. Let me say it again. You cannot get whole if you're out there being a hoe. You sleeping with her, you sleeping with him. You sleeping with them, you sleeping with whatever you can. You're a hoe, but you don't realize that you need wholeness in your soul. And you're trying to satisfy something with flesh that is not going to be a long-term residual. It's not. That woman changed her lifestyle when she met Jesus. And I want to encourage you to change your lifestyle. Get, get in alignment. Get to know Jesus. Get to know the Father. Ask him, God, show me me, my true identity. If you only knew how valuable you were, you wouldn't throw around and act as if Sex is just something casual that you can just, I uh, did it and keep moving. You don't know what residue from Bobo, Ricky, Henry, Marcus, Timothy, Stephen, or what residuals, what spirits are coming from Shaniqua, Tay Tay Shaquan, Michalik, uh, Shannon, Emily, Karen. All those spirits that you engage with when you're engaging in illegal sex, it, it lingers and it will gnaw at your soul when you want to live right. All of the, those imaginations and thoughts of experiences that you've encountered, that God only wanted you to have one flavor that you got to experience. But many of us have had multiple flavors for multiple times. And so settling down may become a struggle because you're so used to being a hoe. Jamal Bryant said very clearly, he said his first attempt as a man and a man of God to be monogamous was when he chose to marry his wife. He had had women, several women on the books and his first attempt at being monogamous was when he chose to get married. What a pathetic situation. Giselle, his ex-wife, dropped dead gorgeous. Good heart. But he was a hoe. And so, in my book, S-H-I-T Happens in Church, I titled that chapter, Christian Whores. An oxymoron. Because you cannot be a Christian and a hoe at the same time. One of the quotes from the book, and I think you all will appreciate this. Now we know hoes that work the streets. But Christian hoes lure the ones that preach. Come on. Can I get an amen, somebody? We know the hoes that walk the street. But what about the Christian hoes that lure those that preach? You can't get whole being a hoe, putting your, your sausage in a new hole. You don't have any business doing that. And this woman was doing that with her so-called alleged husbands. The problem is we try to think out, think God, and think this is what the culture does. But what does God demand? Character. Character, character that looks like Jesus, acts like Jesus, and walks like Jesus, striving to be like Jesus. Holiness still is, is what God is expecting from us. Even when we're tempted, invite him into your temptations. Even when you're feeling lured, invite him into it. He will come wherever we ask him to come. And I promise you, God will not leave you hanging. When you're tempted, Whatever is going on, if you invite him in, say, God, I want to do this and I know it's not right. Please help me. I promise you, he will show up, he will show out, and he will find you a way of escape. He says that he will not put you in a situation where temptations will take you over if you allow him 
to come in, invite him in. He's ready. He's willing. And he's able to set us free from normalizing what is not sanctified. God bless you.